Today, we're going to be looking at the story, Places in My Neighborhood. Before we get started, a few things to think about in this story. When you look at the title page of our story, you see that they're using a photograph to show a fire truck. Throughout the story, you will see that they've used more photographs instead of illustrations. Most times when you see a book that uses photographs instead of, in, instead of illustrations, you're reading an informational text. It's a real story that's giving you real information about the things that are taking place in the story. Another thing that you see often in an informational text is a heading. Each section of the story will have a heading that tells you what you're gonna be reading about on those pages. For this part of the story, we would be reading about what is a neighborhood. The third thing that you often see when reading an informational text is a glossary. The glossary is usually found at the end of the story and it will have new words and their meanings listed so that if you come across a word that you don't understand or are familiar with, you can find the definition for that word in the glossary. So let's get started with today's story, Places in Our Neighborhood. What is a neighborhood? A neighborhood is a community filled with different places to see. Each place has a special purpose that meets our needs. Places to live. Mia's home is in the city. Her apartment is in a building with many other apartments. Jack lives in a house in a small town. His street is lined with homes. Places to keep us safe. Carlos visits the fire station in his neighborhood. The firefighters rush to put out a fire. Devin visits the police station. The officer tells him not to talk to strangers. At the clinic, a nurse gives Lila a shot. She feels better when she gets a bandage. Places to find things. Justin bikes to the library in his neighborhood. He checks out books about dinosaurs. Jen wants fruit and milk. At the grocery store, her dad finds fresh grapefruit.
Neighborhoods can be big or small. What places do you see in your neighborhood? And that's the end of that story. So today I would like for you to have a conversation with the adult at your house about some of the things that we read in this story. Think about the places in the neighborhood that keep us safe. Places like the fire station, the police station, or the clinic. Come to think of it, what do you think a clinic might be? It says that a nurse gives Lila a shot and she feels better when she gets a bandage. Hmm, what do you think that that might mean a clinic is? When I look at my picture and I use the key details from the story, I kind of can figure out that a clinic is like a doctor's office. I see a nurse, I see his stethoscope, she got a shot there, and I know when I go to the doctor, I often have to get a shot. And even though I don't like shots very much, it's always better when I get a Band-Aid or a sucker at the end. So talk to the adults at your house today about some of the places in your neighborhood that keep you safe. Have a great day. Yesterday, I got to meet with my sister who lives in Turkey and learn a little bit about Turkish culture. So today, I'm going to add a little bit more details to my notes so I don't forget what I want to write about in my teaching book about Turkey. I am going to get started with my notes. The first thing I need to write is my topic. And my topic is Turkey because I interviewed my sister learning about the country Turkey. Now I need to think of my topic sentence. How is my book going to begin? I think I'm going to write, I'm going to teach you about Turkish culture because this is a book about Turkish culture. So I want to tell the reader what the book is about. Now today I'm going to compile those notes about the celebrations, customs, language, and food into my first draft of my book. Let's get started. I am now ready to begin writing my teaching book about Turkey. I'm going to leave the front cover blank for now. I want to just really get started on the actual writing of my book. So the first thing that I want to write about is the celebrations. So how could I write that? In Turkey, people celebrate Children's Day. My next topic or detail is customs. A custom in Turkey is to take off shoes and sanitize hands and face before entering the house. My third page is going to be on the detail of language. People speak Turkish in Turkey. My last detail is food. People in Turkey eat kebabs and baklava. I now have a draft of my book. So again, I'll put my front cover here. Oh, 
Do you know what I'm missing is my topic sentence. I want to introduce the book. And look, I already wrote it here yesterday in my notes. How easy is that? This is a book about turkey. In this book, I will be teaching you about Turkish culture. Okay. So again, my front cover will be here. I have my topic sentence or my introduction page. This, this a book. Oh, I might have to fix that tomorrow when we edit. This is, well, I'm gonna do it now before I forget. <laughs> but tomorrow we're gonna revise and edit. This is a book about Turkey and this book I will be teaching you about Turkish culture. In Turkey, people celebrate Children's Day. A custom in Turkey is to take off shoes and sanitize hand and face before entering the house. Oops, another place I need to re edit. I'll wait till tomorrow. People speak Turkish in Turkey. People in Turkey eat kebabs and baklava. And I have a last page, my conclusion. But we'll work on that when we edit and revise tomorrow. Right now, I'm just gonna go and illustrate my, my pages. Okay, so today with our book, we began writing. So we wrote a little bit about each detail and illustrated and colored. Tomorrow, we're going to edit and revise as well as add our conclusion page. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.
Hello, my name is Samantha DeFlanders Williams, a STPPS first grade teacher. I'm so glad you could join me. In this lesson, we are going to learn about central message and character traits. Today, we will be reading one of my most favorite books, I Like Myself by Karen Beaumont, illustrated by David Catro. Our learning targets for today will be, I can recognize and understand the central message of a story, and I can use illustrations and details to describe characters. I have a question. Do you know what a central message or a character trait is? A central message is the part of the theme that the author wants you to learn. It's the big idea, a lesson that the author is trying to teach you. Character traits are descriptive adjectives that help us understand the characters in the story. An example of a character trait would be a word you would use to describe a character in a movie or in a book. What are some words you would use to describe the main character in one of your most favorite books? Great. All of those words are descriptive adjectives. They're character traits. I Like Myself by Karen Beaumont. I like myself. I'm glad I'm me. There's no one else I'd rather be. I like my eyes, my ears, my nose. I like my fingers and my toes. I like me wild. I like me tame. I like me different and the same. I like me fast. I like me slow. I like me everywhere I go. I like me on the inside too, for all I think and say and do. Inside, outside, upside down, from head to toe and all around. I like it all. It all is me. And me is all I want to be. And I don't care in any way what someone else may think or say. I may be called a silly nut or a crazy cuckoo bird. So what? I'm having too much fun, you see, for anything to bother me. Even when I look a mess, I still don't like me any less. Cause nothing in this world you know can change what's deep inside. And so, no matter if they stop and stare, no person ever anywhere can make me feel that what they see is all there really is to me. I still like me with fleas or warts, or with the silly snout that snorts. Or knobby knees, or hippo hips, or purple polka dotted lips. Or beaver breath, or stinky toes, or horns protruding from my nose. or yikes with spikes all down my spine or hair that's like a porcupine. I still would be the same, you see. 
I like myself because I'm me. I hope you enjoyed the book. Now let's think. What in the story can we use to help us think of the central message? Are there some pages that remind you of what the author wanted us to learn? I know using pages from our story to support what we think our central message is, is a great way to help us. Here are three pages from our story. I like me on the inside too, for all I think and say and do. No matter if they stop and stare, no person ever anywhere can make me feel that what they see is all there really is to me. I like myself because I'm me. How can these three pages help us figure out our central message? Do you know our central message? Right, I think so too. I think the author wants us to learn to be happy with ourselves in the inside as well as out no matter what others say. Our book had many character traits. Remember, character traits are adjectives that help us understand our character. And there are two categories that we can use when classifying character traits. We can look at the outside of a character, or we can look at the inside of the character by what we learn based on what the character said, did, thinks, or feels. Now let's fill in the chart for our character traits. As you recall, character traits can be sorted into two categories. Outside physical traits, traits that we see when we look at our main character, and inside traits, traits that our main character may feel, think, say, or do. I've come up with two outside physical traits that I think were in our book. Those are that our character had curly hair and that she was a girl. An inside trait that I think I found is that our character is happy. Do you know how I came to these answers? You're right, I utilized the illustrations and recalled the words that were read earlier to come up with our answers. Now, can you finish our character traits chart? I need you to find two outside traits as well as three inside traits that describe the main character in our story, I like myself. When you are done, here's a great extension activity. You will need a sheet of paper, pencil, markers, or crayons. I would like for you to draw a picture of yourself and write all the traits that you love about yourself. Thank you for watching as we learned about central message and character traits. You did a great job. Remember to keep watching other videos like this one so we can all keep learning together. You can watch lessons on STPPS TV or on the website stpsb.org. See you again soon.
do it whenever you would like. So, if you want, you could get a sheet of paper and a pencil, and you could write these exercises down. So when then, so when you're not here with me, you can do them by yourself. Maybe you can demonstrate them to someone in your household and get a timer and set them to do each exercise for a minute because that's what we're going to do today. Nine different exercises for one minute each. So I'll give you about one minute to go gather those materials. Meanwhile, if anyone out there doesn't need these materials, you can be jogging in place with me for one minute. So we're just going to jog in place here to get warmed up. Okay, we're going to get ourselves going. You can jog around in a circle. You can jog forward and jog back. You can jog sideways to the right and to the left. We're just jogging in place. Anybody, any age, any time can do these exercises. So, how y'all doing today? Woohoo! I'm excited to be here with you. I'm excited to exercise makes the body feel good. It works the biggest muscle in your body, which is the heart. So it keeps the blood pumping in the body. Keeps you full of energy. The more you sit around, the more tired you get. The more you move, the more you want to keep going. So, keeps your brain thinking. All right, woo! There we go, that was our one minute, so we're gonna go right in. If you want to write the first exercise down, squat, jump, and turn for one minute. So you're going to do a squat, jump, and turn. Squat, jump, and turn. Squat, jump, and turn. Now, if you want to get crazy with it and do a 360, you can do a squat, jump, and turn. Woo! Squat, jump, turn. Squat, jump, turn. You want to have a little fun? You could squat, Jump, turn. You can try and go really high. You can try and go really far. Squat, jump, run back, turn. Just get fancy with it. Woo! How are we feeling? Woo! Yep, keep it going. We're almost there. We've got about 15 seconds. Squat, jump, turn. Squat, jump, turn. Squat, jump, turn. Almost there. Three, two, one. All right. Next exercise, burpee, push-up, fly. So, burpee, push-up, fly. You got that? One minute. And burpee, push-up if you have to, drop to your knees. And fly. You can do it with the arm and leg out. Or you can do it with just your arms. All right, so push up can be on your knees or on your toes. So start here, burpee, come up, push up, fly, jump. This is a burpee. If you want, you can do it on your hands without going your chest to the ground. In, out. Knees, push up, and you can do the flies like this on your knees if you need to. Whatever works for you, not what I'm doing, what you can do. So, all right, keep it going. Push up and fly. Keep that line still. Oh, there's that timer. That was one minute. All right, next exercise. Jumping lunges and a lunge. So, jumping lunge. Lunge, 90, 90, front leg, back leg. Make sure the knee is not over the toe. So, jump, lunge, then you stand still. Lunge, and lunge. So we're gonna put all that together for one minute. So we have jumping lunge, jumping lunge, lunge, lunge. Jumping lunge, jumping lunge, lunge, lunge. Woo! Okay, how are we feeling? We getting excited? We're moving? That heart rate's up? We're starting to breathe hard, right? Yeah, this makes you feel good. We are exercising and 
You can do this with anyone in your household at any time of the day. Right now, that is. Make sure that you're still doing your schoolwork, keeping up, keeping that brain moving. Make sure you do some reading. Practice your math facts. And you can always, if you have access to the internet, look up science and social studies. All right, there's that one minute. Now our next exercise, tuck jump. Now there's no way I'll be able to do one minute tuck jumps with you, but I will show them to you and I'll bet you can do hundreds of them. Tuck jump, tuck jump, tuck jump. If that's too hard, march in place. You can do tuck jump, march in place. All right, one minute, here we go. I know I'm moving fast, but I have to get this little exercise class done in like 12 minutes or less. And we have nine minutes of work. So, tuck jump, walk. Tuck jump, walk. Tuck jump, walk. Or just keep, tuck jump, just keep going. Woohoo! Y'all should be sweating. That's good, as long as you are by yourself or with someone in your household. Tuck jump, and march, and march. Now, Coach Nancy is a little older, so she can't dump tuck jump for one minute and be able to talk to you. Woo, woo, woo! But I sure can keep going. That clock is still ticking. And we got about 10 seconds. We're almost there. Keep going. I know y'all feeling great. And there it is, one minute. Tuck jumps complete, yes. Now we got a little bit of a break, a plank hold. So you're gonna get down in a plank position and hold for one minute. Make sure your hands are right underneath your shoulders. And if this is too hard, you can drop to your elbows. Now, personally, I find the elbows a little bit harder, but most people say this is easier and this is harder. I guess it depends on the strength of your shoulders and your arms. Now, I've been working out for quite a long time most of my life since I was probably five. So I think this one's a little easier, but I'm probably a little stronger in my chest and my shoulders. And this just kind of hurts my elbows and I feel it in a different part of the muscle in the shoulder. So that part of my shoulder is probably a little bit weaker. So I probably need to work on that. But this is the plank. Now, if you're getting tired and you need to rest, Oh, there was one minute. No time for rest. You did it. Woohoo! All right. Moving on to Running Man. So, one minute of Running Man is right here. Now, you can have fun with this one. This one, I don't find so bad. Some of you might find it tiring. I think I could do this for about five minutes. But that just goes to show you that some exercises are easier for one person than the next. So you need to make this little exercise routine your personal goal. And obviously, you shouldn't be worried about what your neighbor's doing because you should be by yourself or with someone in your household. Therefore, you don't have any competition. So your competition is you. You can see how you can improve which is what you should do all the time. Always worry about you. Don't worry. Oh, look at that, then it went by fast. Okay, wide arm push-ups. So here we go again. We are going to turn the hands out. We're going to come down to our knees. I'm gonna go ahead and set that timer. And we're gonna put our hands out wide. You can be on your knees and do a push-up. Just like that. Now, if you need a little more, you do the same thing. Hands are turned out like this on the ground and you come up to your toes. Same thing, chest is, arms are wide, chest to the ground and up. Try and touch the chest to the ground, okay? You're looking right down your nose. 
You want to keep your neck down. You don't want to keep your neck up. So facing down, looking down. Chest to the ground. It's too hard. Drop to your knees. Okay, if that's still too hard, bring your knees in. Be like on all fours, like a dog. And, or another animal that's on all four legs. I just use the dog as an example. So, you could have your dog watching you. I bet some of you might be able to teach your dog some of these tricks. All right, there's that one minute, yay! Okay, now this one, you've done before. You've done jumping jacks, and now we're gonna add jumping jacks with plank jacks. So, one minute on the timer, here we go. We go down, and we do a plank jack with just the legs moving, and then a jumping jack. So, jumping jack, legs out, arms up, legs together, arms down. Put that in fast motion, that's your jumping jack. Now your plank jack is out, in, out, in. Just the um, hand, just the legs, excuse me, are moving out, in, out, in. So we're gonna put that together and we're gonna bend down. Plank jack, stand up, jumping jack. Bend down, plank jack, stand up, jumping jack. You can have fun with it, move around in a circle. Plank jack, jumping jack. Plank jack, jumping jack. Woo, we're almost ready to get down on our backs on the floor for our last exercise. Then, I hope you're as tired as me, but if you're not, there it is, do it again. Just do the routine over and over until you're tired. So here we go. Windshield wipers, this is an ab exercise to work those tummies. Okay, you're going to, I'm gonna set the timer, and we're going to put the arms up. Here we're gonna go. Low. Windshield wiper up, down, up, down. Let me move down, make sure y'all can see me. Now, if you wanna get a bit fun with it, go to the side, side. Just make sure that you're keeping the shoulders on the ground. When you're coming up, Go as far as you can. You can go further because your hamstrings aren't tight. Go for it. Then you want to keep your legs about six inches, two to six inches off the ground. So it's up. Okay, I'm going to go to the side, keeping those shoulders on the ground. Woo! And I'm feeling good. Ah, I know I'm sweating. I hope you're sweating with me. And I hope you wrote. I know you probably didn't get a chance to write all these down as we were doing them, so while we're stretching, oh, there it is! We are done! Oh, we did a full nine minutes, and if you did the warm-up too, you did a full ten minutes. I'm so proud of you, and I'm so glad that you chose to exercise with me today. Now, I'm going to give you one minute to write some of these down, or if you have your phone, snap a picture so that you can do these any day, any time. I'm gonna go over them again. Squat, jump, turn, number one. Number two, burpee, push up, fly. Number three, jumping, lunge, lunge. Number four, tuck jump. Number five, plank hold. Number six, running man. Number seven, wide arm push up. Remember, turn those hands out, chest goes to the ground. Plank jack, jumping jack. Then we have that windshield wiper. So. You can practice these at home by yourself with anyone in your household and challenge yourself to get better at these exercises as time goes on. Thank you students. See you next time.
Hi guys, welcome back. This week, we're going to be learning about the beautiful state of Louisiana. This is our planet Earth. This is the continent we live on, North America. This is our country, the United States of America. And this is our state. Louisiana. Can you figure out why it's nicknamed the boot? Like many states, Louisiana has many symbols. And today, we are going to learn about Louisiana's state song, You Are My Sunshine. Sunshine, you make me happy when skies are gray. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. The first thing we want to do with our Louisiana craft is draw an outline of our state. We have the outline of Louisiana drawn. Now it's time to get out our watercolors. As you see, I painted the state of Louisiana and I got a little outside the lines but that is totally okay. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. We are now ready to write the lyrics of the song, You Are My Sunshine. Dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. So you can keep going and repeat the chorus or you can continue on with the lyrics. It's totally up to you. For those of you who do not have watercolors at your house, you can do the same thing with crayons. You now have two ways you can create your Louisiana State Song Art Project. I hope you had fun. I can't wait to see your creations. See you next time. Bye!
too pretty in her very messy art studio. This week, I wanted to show you my art studio and all of my supplies. The Supri buys things from Hobby Lobby and Michaels and online that are traditional art supplies like canvases and lots of different paints and all different kinds of tools. But you really don't need a studio and you certainly don't need a lot of art supplies in order to be an artist. So today, we're gonna get out of the studio, out of the house, and do some earth art. So step one is very simple. Just go outside and enjoy the beautiful day and collect some things that catch your eye. Here's some things that caught my eye on my walk. find a flat surface and bring all the items that you collected on your walk. So my daughter and I, when we did ours, we just used a crawfish tray. But you can use a plate or you can just do it on a countertop or on your front porch, anywhere that you can find that gives you enough space to make your creation. Now for the fun part, step three. Take all your items and spread them out. And what you're going to do is you're going to use those items and your amazing creativity to actually make a self-portrait. So look at your collection and see if you can think of the main parts of your self-portrait first. So you remember a self-portrait is basically from your chest up focusing on the facial features. So see if you can find something to represent your eyes and your nose and your mouth first, and then go in with the details. After that, you can really be creative and add your personality. So those are some examples of mandala art and also some examples of radial symmetry that you could find in nature. I wonder if you could find some more. Now here's some examples that my daughter and I did with our materials that we collected on our walk.
Did anybody notice in the first one, my daughter changed her mind for the center of her mandala. Hmm, is that okay to change your mind? Is it okay to make changes as you go? Of course it is, you knew the answer to that. You can change things up as you go, try things out, see if you like it. Or maybe something else in your yard will catch your eye that you want to change it out for. So boys and girls, now that you've created these two fabulous pieces of artwork, there are a couple things that you can do. First, you can document your artwork and keep it with a photo. Get your parents' phone or ask them to take some pictures of it for you. The other thing you can do is, especially if you live in a neighborhood, unlike me, I live out in the country, but if you live in a neighborhood, you could always leave your art out on display for people that walk by to see it. So be sure to share your artwork in some way. I would love to see your artwork. I miss your artwork so much, boys and girls. I can't even tell you.